Tires are asked to perform a tough job. They must support the weight of the car and its payload and maintain a direct link to a variety of road surfaces in all kinds of conditions. A lot of time and money is invested by the world's tire manufacturers in the engineering of today's tires. But no matter the amount of money spent in the design and manufacturing process, none of it matters if the tire is not cared for out in the real world. Tires are, in every sense of the word, where the rubber meets the road. Even a Formula One race car won't handle, ride, go, or stop like it should if the tires aren't up to the task. Now consider the awesome responsibility they carry when the occupants are not professional drivers, but your neighbors and their families. As a professional technician, they depend on you to keep them safe. And it all starts with making sure the tires in their car are up to the challenge. And that's the topic of this month's The Trainer. The most important factor in caring for tires is maintaining the correct air pressure. Nearly every car that comes into your shop has at least one tire that is grossly underinflated. Why is proper air pressure so important? It's the air that supports the weight. When it's right, the tire's contact patch, or that part of the tire that is in contact with the road, will be just the way the engineer designed it. Ride quality will be the best it can be, and the internal temperature of the tire will stand its best chance at staying within its design range. Underinflated tires will cause the contact patch to deform and result in less actual contact with the road surface. Tire temperatures will increase dramatically and can cause the tire to overheat and fail structurally. The car will handle poorly and stop just as poorly. Underinflation and the resulting potential for failure is one reason that the federal government enacted the TREAD Act several years ago, mandating the use of tire pressure monitoring systems on all cars and light trucks starting with the 2008 model year. Our August issue will tell you all you need to know about these systems and the tools out there to service them. We'll also be hosting a live webcast on August 25th with our friends at TST. Sponsored by our friends at Bartech, we'll tell you more about servicing today's systems and brief you on the new EZ programmable TPMS sensor. You can get more information and register anytime by going to www.motorage.com forward slash TPMS. Checking the condition and pressures of every tire on every car that comes into your shop should be considered mandatory. If your shop's in California, now, by regulation, it is. After all, would you want your mother or wife to be stranded on the side of the freeway with a flat tire during rush hour? Or worse yet, be the indirect cause of injury to others because the car left your shop with unsafe tires? So make sure that you check everyone that comes into your shop and make it a routine part of your everyday job. Making tire inspections and pressure checks a habit is easy if you incorporate it into your normal routine. After you bring the car into the bay, take a moment to check the driver's B-pillar or door for the tire loading label. This label will tell you what tire sizes are approved, loading limits for the car, and most importantly, what the recommended tire pressures are. If the car has no label here, Check the owner's manual or your service information system for the specs. Don't use the tire pressure maximum embossed on the tire sidewall. That's just that, a maximum limit, and should only be used as a limit for seating the bead. I like to set the lift on every car I work on and raise it up enough to make things more comfortable, especially leaning over the hood. Take it from me and other techs that have put some miles on their clocks. This will save a lot of strain on your lower back over the course of your career. With the car set, it's easy to bring the car up to eye level for a good inspection. Start at any tire you like, but make a habit of always starting at the same one to avoid missing that odd man out. Run your hands around the tire carefully to check for abnormal wear or damage. Many times there will be excessive wear on the inside half of the tire, an area that you and your customer can't see with the car on the ground. The tire in this photo actually blew out as soon as I raised the car off the ground. Then check the air pressure. Odds are it will be low. But what if it isn't? Does that mean it's okay? Not necessarily. Tire pressures increase with temperature, and if the car just pulled in, the pressures can be four to six pounds higher than their normal cold reading.
That means that a high tire that reads in spec could actually be underinflated. A rule of thumb is that a tire that has been driven over one mile is too hot to check accurately. Allow at least an hour for the tire to cool before correcting the pressure if at all possible. If the tire is low and your customer can't wait, correct the pressure to specification and advise them to recheck them later. Oh yeah, what if the car is equipped with TPMS? Can't I just use the sensor pressures? You certainly should be able to, providing the sensors are all working properly. To be sure they are, verify the pressure using a digital gauge to see if the two agree. And before you do any kind of tire work, check all the sensors to be sure they are functioning. If you find one or two tires that are much lower than the others, suspect a puncture. But even if they all check just fine, carefully inspect the tires for tread remaining and any foreign objects. Tires are lined inside with a soft rubber called an inner liner, and it is designed to seal around punctures to prevent rapid air loss. But it isn't a fix for a puncture. Raise the car up a little higher. Using a tire crayon, scribe a line on the tread to mark your starting point. Then rotate the tire slowly, carefully looking for anything that shouldn't be there. If you do find a puncture, repair it properly using a combination plug patch. Plugs alone are not acceptable. The steel cords used to make up the tire's belts can saw through a plug and cause it to fail, and using a patch alone will allow water to get into the plies and end up causing a separation of the tread from the tire's body. Never repair a tire damaged in the outer tread block and certainly never, never attempt to repair sidewall punctures. Check the amount of tread wear left by taking a look at the tread wear indicators in the grooves. Another easy way you can share with your customers is the old penny trick. Using a penny, turn the coin so the top of Lincoln's head is facing the tire and insert it into the tread grooves. If you can see the top of his head, the tread is worn below usefulness. To be more accurate, use a tire tread depth gauge. Use the gauge by first extending the rod, then insert the tip into the tread groove, slowly moving the body of the tool down until it contacts the tread element. Remove and read the measurement in 30 seconds of an inch. Two to three 30 seconds is considered a minimum depth. It's not the amount of tread we're worried about, but the groove depth cut into the tread. Ideally, a tire would be like those you see on a race car. Nothing but rubber, so the maximum amount of contact with the road could be made. In the real world, though, we have to deal with rain and snow, and the grooves in the tread are designed to funnel that water away from the contact patch. When they get worn, they can't do their job, and the tire may be prone to hydroplaning, a condition where the tire actually rides on the surface of the water and not the asphalt. Be on the lookout for abnormal wear that could spell trouble in the suspension or alignment. Of the three basic angles of caster, camber, and toe, toe angle especially will wear a tire to nothing and quickly and may not be readily noticeable to the driver since typically incorrect toe will not cause a drift or pull. A straight steering wheel doesn't mean this setting is correct. Toe wear can be identified by the sawtooth wear in the tread elements it creates as the tire is scrubbed down the road rather than rolling freely. Camber is the second angle that will destroy a tire in short order. Look for high wear on the inside or outside of the tire as one indication of camber issues. Recommend alignment checks and necessary corrections every 6,000 miles to help your customers get the most life out of their tires and also optimize the handling characteristics of their car. Last, take a look at the Department of Transportation, or DOT, serial number stamped into every tire. The last four numbers represent when the tire was made. The first pair are the week of the year and the last pair represents the year itself. Rubber ages and gets hard and brittle over time and it is considered industry practice to recommend replacement if the tires are over five years old regardless of tread condition. Mm -hmm.